How's everybody doing out there? I'm Chad Shoup and welcome to my latest edition of Bank It or Tank It. Today we're going to be covering a stock that's trying to end 2020 on a high note. This is Automatic Data Processing Company, ticker ADP, and they're known to do all these payrolls for small businesses to even large clients and they help organize everything on the payroll side to where it's a smooth, seamless process. And they've been expanding recently, or I should say over the last several years, into the human resources and helping companies outsource that. And we're gonna take a look today to see if that's helping them keep them relevant in an uncertain times like we've been through here in 2020. So let's jump right in. Our company today is Automatic Data Processing, and let's get started. And this stock came to us from Mac and Gloria who left me a comment here on YouTube, let me know to take a look at this company and put it on my radar earlier this year and I've been keeping an eye on it and now I got around to doing a full bank it or tank it on the stock. So just a reminder, you can scroll below, leave me a, a comment on whatever stock you want me to take a look at and whatever stock you may want me to feature in an upcoming bank it or tank it video. So before we dive into all the details today, remember we run through the fundamentals, the sentiment, the technicals, all to determine whether or not this is a stock that we want to bank on going higher in the next year or it's a stock that's going to tank heading into 2021 and it's one that we want to avoid so b before we get those details i just want to say that this is just opinionated content this is not based on a strategy or a whole lot of due diligence you're going to see what i run through today and i'm laying it all out the information that we're looking at so that way you can see how we're just coming up to the conclusion on whether or not it's a bank or tank stock but by no means is this focused around a specific strategy that's going to be designed to make you money over the next year or so. Instead, I like to focus on short-term trends that I use options to benefit from. And I know a lot of people are interested in options and trying to get started with options. So that's why I started a new free e-letter that covers nothing but options. Every week, every Friday, we're going to send you some of the latest insights and options analysis, some new details, some new element for you to learn. So that way we can all have a same level of understanding of options. So that way when we're ready to trade them, we're all ready to learn how to take profits and we understand the risk that comes with trading options in the stock market. So below this video, I have a link that will let you join that free e-letter if you want to learn more about options. So that way you can understand the types of trades that I would take to benefit from and the type of strategies that I use to profit from the stock market. So be sure to scroll below, check that out and leave me a comment and also hit the like button if you enjoy this video, just let me know. So we're going to get started with the fundamentals of automatic data processing and we're going to do that with the key stats. Let's take a look. So the two key stats that we always like to take a look at are net income, and that's the line on the chart and the total revenue, that's the blue bars on the chart. So the blue bars, the key for that is on the right hand side and the data for the line is on the left hand side. Now you can see that net income here over the years that we're looking at starting in 2017 through 2020, which are really these middle months, uh, we see a nice rise in net income, a nice rise in total revenue. So everything's looking good and you can see they have this bit of a slump here from 2020, 2021, where it flatlines. And I think all of that is really due to the coronavirus pandemic and they've had a slowdown in their orders and in companies interested in growing and using their payrolls because when you think about all the layoffs and all the issues that we've had here in 2020 it's really been a hit to the smaller corporations in our economy and that's primarily who automatic data processing likes to pitch their products to and that's who their target market is so for those people to be on a hiring slowdown than a payroll company which is what automatic data processing is tends to see a slowdown with them, but we can see that once we get out of that here in 2022 and 2023, the expectations are for revenue and net income to continue the same trajectory that they've been on with a nice steady climb. So those are some expectations that are baked in on just returning to normal and assuming there's no other disruptions to automatic data processing's client market that's going to impact their business over the next several years. So let's pull up some quick comps here of automatic data processing and their key competitors to see how this company stacks up. And on this, we can see that the market cap, this is basically just the size of the company. We just wanna have a gauge for that. Automatic data processing is 73 billion. The average of the competitors here are 145 billion. And you can see that it's really just three stocks that are massive companies. It's Visa, which is more of a credit card company, but they've been expanding. PayPal, which is an online payments company, and then MasterCard. So these are the 300 billion, 250 billion, 485 billion dollar companies that automatic data processing is up against competing with. But uh, sleeper in here is Square that's really just been skyrocketing in growth. You can see the next column that we're about to get to revenues, 55% growth for Square, 97 billion dollar company. 
Automatic data processing is a $73 billion company, but only saw 5% revenue growth. So they're a smaller company, but they're not seeing revenue growth anywhere near the average of their competitors here. The mean for revenue growth is 16.9%. And again, Square's pushing that on the high side, but we also have Pfizer, PayPal, Global Payments, and even Fidelity here that are pushing the limits on the higher end of the growth rate and they're all beating out automatic data processing. That's on the revenue side. Now on the net income side, ADP is still lagging behind their competitors. 11.84% growth rate, 18.66% is the average for their quick comps here. And the one really holding this up is Western Union, which that company's really been struggling lately with, they're an international payments company, but they've been disrupted a lot by PayPal, Square, these other companies, and you can see their revenues is negative actually. So they've done a good job of increasing their net income, but it's just all that they have to focus on after their revenues are sliding. But even the other companies, Global Payments, Visa, PayPal, uh, MasterCard, all above ADP and net income growth, and Square doesn't have a negative three-year compound average annual growth rate for net income. So it just gets a mark there. So we can't understand how that's looking, but just when we step back and we look at ADP on this level, it's a smaller company based on the market cap, but it's not growing revenues, keeping up with their peers, and the net income's not growing at a, a competitive rate either. And I just wanted to pull up one more chart before we dive into the sentiment readings. And this is a, breaks down the segments here of ADP and between their employer services, which is the basically the payroll division, this is their traditional business model where they're setting up payroll and helping you outsource all of that. Then their relatively new segment that's been growing rapidly is Professional Employer Organization, PEO Services. And this is their HR department where they're outsourcing HR solutions through them. And you can see that on this chart back in 2015, it was just 2.6 billion. And then to today, back up in 2020, we're at 4.5 billion. So that's seen a pretty monumental growth compared to their payroll division, which is 8.8 .8 billion, only went up to 10 billion. So it's a very small movement there in their growth rate, but you can see that the growth that they've really been going through over the last five years has been coming from this HR department. And I point that out because it's it's almost in contrast to what's the route that Square is taking. Square, if you don't know what they are, then you should check out my previous bank it or tank it on the company to get a better idea. But basically they're a payment provider that they're in businesses, small businesses, and they let you take payments on the, the iPads, or even by mobile phones, and they help set it up with your customers to where it's a very seamless transaction that you can accept credit cards and even cash right on the spot. But what they've been doing now is they're moving over to payroll. So they're hooking all these small businesses with this software to platform to take payments that's extremely beneficial to companies just getting started, low cost, and then they've been pushing into the payroll. So they already, they're coming in at the ground level, then they're taking payroll, that's dipping into ADP's territory there, where this has their, been their target market, just the payroll division. But now Square's coming in from the bottom where they have this seamless entry, where they can come in, they're competing on payments, and then they can extend that relationship and extend those cost benefits into the payroll department. And the solution from ADP has been this to go the other way for companies that are large enough that need human resources and to be able to outsource some of those handlings of uh, the human resource department, they are now combining that with their payroll department. So that's how they're seeing some cost beneficiaries. And at some point, who knows, maybe these companies could even merge. But right now, you got to be concerned a little bit if you're a shareholder of ADP that Square is just kind of coming in here and starting to take chunks out of the bread and butter would have been ADP's clientele. So that's going to be something that we want to continue to keep an eye on because it's relatively new for Square. Like I said, they started as this payment company and kind of revolutionized how these small corporations can take payments. And then now they've pushed that into the payroll side, whereas ADP has just been all payroll. Now they're moving into the human resources side to try to compete with that. So that's gonna be the thing to watch over the next several years between these two companies, ADP and Square. And that's why we wanted to take a look at what is growing here. So human resource department that's really fueling the growth. I mean, it's grown almost 2 billion just in that HR department over the last five or six years. And their employer services, which is which is much, much larger, three to four times larger than their HR department, didn't even grow by the same two billion. So that just gives you the type of impact that their HR department is having on their revenue growth. And it's really helping drive this company forward into the future. The question is just, what are these small corporations, their business partners gonna 
need more down the line? Are they going to rely more on outsourcing the HR department or are they going to need the payment and that smooth transition from the payments right into their payroll with Square? So these are going to be the two big giants to watch as these companies dig, dig into this competition even more in the coming years. Now I wanted to pull up a new slide and this is basically our sentiment reading and we're looking at price to earnings, short interest, and the average broker recommendation. So all three of these are basically the investor sentiment on the company. It gives us an idea of how investors feel and what they're thinking about the company. Because the price to earnings is really what are investors willing to pay per dollar of earnings for the share price of the stock. For ADP, it's 29 times earnings. So that's compared to the broad stock market, it's pretty high. But when we look at the average of these companies for payment stocks, it's actually nowhere near the average of 56 times earnings. And you look at Pfizer, 87 times earnings, PayPal, 81 times earnings, Visa, 42. Global payments, 116. Square doesn't even have positive earnings, so it's no number right now that's even impacting this, but you can imagine that people are willing to pay up for Square when you saw the type of revenue growth that they're going through. It's breakneck speeds, so you know that Square is gonna have a high price to earnings ratio as well. So this tells us that investors are really not willing to pay up too much for ADP. Yes, 29 times earnings is still high, but not compared to some of their competitors. So that's really how you want to view the price to earnings ratios. What is the industry getting that the company competes in and that they're lagging behind that and ADP is not drawing as much investor interest. But when we look at short interest, this is as a percent of shares outstanding. So the higher the number this is, the more investors that are in the stock are willing to bet that the stock's going lower. And for ADP, it's only 1%. So that's really great to see. And there's not a lot of people that are concerned that this is a stock that's just about to fall off a cliff because when, when you look at Western Union, they're at 9.3%. So that, that's a stock that a lot of investors are saying, whoa, let's back up. This stock's about to tank. And even Square, 5.9%. And that's because this is a volatile stock. It's shot up. It's a very hype-driven stock. And when investors see stocks like that that are, can just swing on an earnings beat or an earnings miss because they're relatively young, you tend to see higher short interest ratios as well. But that just gives you a heads up that Square is a volatile stock and ADP this 1% short interest ratio gives it some stability. It means that there's not a lot of people betting on the stock to go lower. Then the average broker recommendation just tells us whether or not they have it as a buy, which would be a one, or a sell, which would be a five. So one to five is our scale. ADP sitting at 2.95, that's basically three, right in the middle. So they would be a hold, but the average for the industry is 1.98. So it's a slight buy for the industry. So here we are again, when we looked at the revenue, the net income growth, the market cap, ADP was kind of small for the industry and a little behind in revenue and earnings growth. And now they're behind in getting in price to earnings ratio. Now they're behind in the average broker recommendation. So everything's just kind of telling us that yes, ADP is a solid company, but they're not the winner right now in the payment space. Now that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, but it tells us that our investors are a little concerned about the stock, where it sits and kind of what I was talking about, about their human resource approach to kind of competing with the other companies like Squares coming in from the ground up. So it's just a matter of which way is going to have the best growth going forward and end up taking over this industry. So now let's take a look at their technicals to figure out whether or not this is a stock that we're going to bank or tank in 2021. All right, here's our price chart for ADP. And I kind of hate when I draw trend lines like this that are extremely far away. The top solid red line is up here at $176 a share. Then we have the bottom rising support line in green that's way down at $135 a share. So this is a huge gap. And it, I hate drawing them because it basically tells you like, what are you gonna do until it breaks above this? There's a big risk that it can fall back down to $140 a share. The thing is that then it's still in an uptrend and it's still a stock that you would want to hold. So if you're buying on the way down, that's okay. But if you're a holder today, it's like, what do you do? So I drew in these shorter term trend lines and this one, this red one across the middle, just gives you an idea that it created this wedge pattern right here after the 2020 pandemic crisis that we had, and then it bounced around, and then eventually it broke out, and it got to rally up here, and then now it started to consolidate again, and you can notice that it's in red, which means that it's lagging. I talked about this in one of my last Quick Takes videos, but I started using this to shade the chart because I like to look at the relative rotation graph charts quite a bit, and basically what it's doing is it's comparing ADP to the overall stock market, the S&P 500, and it's telling us if it's green, then it's leading the market. When it's yellow, that means it's weakening. And then when it's red, it's lagging the market. So it's falling behind. And then when it turns blue, then it starts to improve. And then it goes into the leading quadrant again. So it goes through this just natural rotation to where stocks don't stay 
leading the market for extended periods of time. They don't stay lagging the market for extended periods of time either. So we can use that rotation to kind of understand that now that it's been weakening and then now it's been lagging, the next step is that it should start to improve. And that gives us an indication that we could see the breakout here over the next couple of weeks out of this little trend channel. And this is what you want to watch for a short term trader. You want to watch this little green support line and this red resistance line. And it's not going to give you a major price target on a breakout because it's such a small consolidation, but it would be great to see the continuation of the uptrend out of this because when we zoomed out and we could see that we had these two resistance lines, we had this major resistance line up top, it's still, it's going to be a lower high on the chart. And that's the start of what could be a downtrend. And we don't want to see a downtrend for the stock because this one, even though it's got some uncertainties around the whole competition with Square and going the human resources route, this is a company that I'm going to put on my bank it list because they are a payment stock. So I think as the economy turns around in 2021, as the vaccines roll out, the economies open up again, payroll companies like ADP are going to continue to climb. Now, is this the best payroll company that you could be in, the best payment stock? Probably not, but it's still a stock that's on my bank it list. And maybe the whole industry is a bank it industry, and that's kind of helping my consensus behind this company. But overall, this is a stock that I want to bank on going higher in 2021. And you know what? 2020 has been a year to forget for the stock. Had the major crash. It's not even back up to new highs like many stocks are right now. And it's still held back a little bit. So there's going to be some pent up demand if this can break up to new highs. So my price target for ADP is going to be up to $250 a share. It's trading at what, $170 some dollars a share today. So we're looking at roughly a 40%, almost 50% rally for the stock here over 2021. That's what I'm calling for. And when we look at the stock, it seems a little crazy ever what it's been going on here in 2020. But just back in 2019, the stock was up 45% in 2019. We had a kind of a slow start or a, a rough end to 2018. And that kind of helped the mark the bottom. And then it was able to rally in 2019 for a 45% gain. And I think 2021 is setting up pretty similar. We've had a rough 2020. And even though the stock market is back up to new highs and I think it could set up for another roaring 2021 as we have a new president coming to the office, they're going to introduce new stimulus packages that's going to help boost the stock market in that first year of presidency. From there, we'll have to take a look and it, things could change. But just over 2021, I'm pretty bullish and I have a $250 price target for ADP. So that's all for my video today. Again, I hope you enjoyed this edition of Bank It or Tank It. Don't forget to click subscribe. And if I don't see you again until the holidays, I hope everybody has a happy holiday season. And I wish you all a Merry Christmas. So until next time, I'm Chad Shoop.